How's it hanging, guys? This is Nate from Nate and Lucas here. And, well, today we'll be going over the complete backstory of Team Fortress 2. And uh, before we start, I have to mention a few things. One, this will indeed be a multiple part series going over the history of the characters, NPCs, and more. So uh, make sure to stick around for that. I'm sure it'll be a blast to record and a blast for you guys to watch. And uh, one last thing, stick around to the end of the video to find out what uh, happened to my YouTube channel and, well, how I got it back. Alright, so let's start off with the basics. In what timeline does TF2 take place? So before I go over this, TF2 has much more to it than just the game. Every character has a background, every event has a story. TF2 is a universe, not just a first person shooter. Well, on with it. Game wise, TF2 takes place in the late 60s and early 70s. And this tends to shock many people for reasons I do not know. People think this game takes place in our time, but it definitely does not. Now, diving deeper into the timeline of TF2, when did it all start? Well, let's get right into that. In 1822, Zephaniah Mann, owner of Mann and Sons Munitions Concerns, better known as Mann Co., gave birth, well, his wife gave birth to Renman, Blutark, and Grey Mann. Grey Mann was abducted by an eagle during the Great Eagle Scourge of 1822. Yeah, I know. The remaining Mann brothers grew up without knowledge of their abducted brother. Now, that was pretty simple, but now, moving on to the first set of mercenaries! In 1850, Zephaniah Mann bought a large amount of land in the United States by petition of Remen and Blutark. Zephaniah did this to expand the munitions business. Once Zephaniah and his sons got there, they discovered the gravel pits of, and the gravel pits and dust bars were useless. For uh, whatever reason, Zephaniah Mann stepped the first ever events of Team Fortress, which Redman and Blutark would fight for for the rest of their lives. Blutark and Redman got together their mercenaries and fought for the land. However, this ended up in a massive stalemate. Uh, in 1854, Blutark and Redman were both engaged in this ultimate war, and as Blutark neared death to old age, he requested an expert craftsman, Radigan Conagher, to construct a machine to extend his life and make him live on. And uh, Radigan agreed. <laughs> that was that was already a lot, but we are not near done the history of this wonderful, wonderful world. Now moving on to the 60s. Around this time, Blue Stark, Blue Tark, what did I say, Blue Stark? Blue Tark is still living off Radigan's life extender, but soon realizes that it's failing. So uh, Blue Tark then contacts Radigan's grandson, Del Conager, who is the current Blue Engineer in the actual game itself that we play and love. To uh, fix the extender, and once the Blue Tark provides Dell with the copies of his grandfather's papers, Dell manages to repair and even improve the extender. Moving on down the line, with 1968 coming around the corner, introducing us to the Gravel War. Fun fact about the Gravel War: this is actually the uh, this is the actual time and place that the game takes place. So right now, what I'm about to mention, this is what we're fighting for in the game when we log on. This is what we're playing. We're playing 1968. So, during the summer of 68, nine mercs, scout, soldier, pyro, heavy, engineer, medic, and the spy were recruited by reliable ex ex excavation and demolition, aka red, I had a tongue twister there, and Builders League United, aka blue, and to extend Redman and Blue Tark's seemingly never ending war to capture the end, the, the land that their fathers have both given them. And moving on to war! exclamation mark but this is in 1968 as well so we're not really moving on but just just go with it war happened when the red demo man and the blue soldier met at an explosives convention and then uh, later became friends the administrator who i will indeed go over in a separate video is severely angered by this so with the help of saxton hale who i will also go over in a separate video tricks both men into thinking they want to kill each other starting war exclamation mark jeez this is a lot of stuff but you know it's well worth going over as it really helps give insight into the game so on that note moving on in 1971 gray man started something that created possibly the best game mode in the game man versus machine after years of signs and rumors gray man makes his move against manco by sending a roa army after them at this time, Redman and Blutark are dead. 
And the age-long stalemate has ended. Meaning the Mercs, the Mercs are out of jobs. But Saxon Hale informed them of the robots. And they banded together. Red and blue fighting to take these boys. These bo what did I just try to say? You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna um, not try to do voiceovers. I'm just gonna commit and I'm just kidding. All right, to take those bots down. So in 1972, after they uh, well defeated the robots, uh, the Mercs went home. They left. Soldier he left and gave guided tours to homes of the stars. Pyro surprisingly became a CEO of an engineering company. Demo Man is a drunk living with his mother. Sniper left back to Australia, and Heavy, he has returned to his home in Siberia. Medic has an important position and is unreachable, and the whereabouts of Dell, well, the engineer, is unknown to the rest of the team. Well, that wraps up the main history of Team Fortress 2. There are more things that I'll go into detail about in other videos, but they aren't major to the story. So, about my channel getting hacked, well, um, basically how I got it back is... I follow Google's. I forgot my password steps. And yeah. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. There wasn't really much to it about the channel. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, peace.